How do we even use trig? Why is it useful? First off, we can solve for missing sides of a right triangle with weird angle measures, right? This is not a 30, 60, 90. This is not a 45, 45, 90 triangle. It's a 20 degree, tri 20 degree angle here, right? But it's still a right triangle. So we can use trig with an angle and a known side, two pieces of information to find a missing side, okay? With Pythagorean theorem, we needed two sides to find the third side. Here, I have an angle and a side, and I can find a side. All right, so let's do that. We're going to solve for x. Now, first off, I think it'd be helpful if we wrote down our wonderful Sokotoa. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's figure things out. First off, if I'm looking at it from the 20-degree angle, that side x, that's going to be my opposite side. And then my 16, that is across from the right angle, so that is my hypotenuse. All right, which trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? That would be sine, the first one there, right? So I'd have sine of my 20 degree angle is equal to the opposite, which is x over 16. All right, so here's what I've got going on here. I've got x in my numerator dividing by 16. I want to get x by itself. Sine of 20, if you plug that into your calculator, that is just a, oh, it's a terrible decimal. In fact, you know what? Let's try it right now. Let's type in sine of 20 into your calculator. Now, first things first, though, we want to make sure we're in the right mode. So I want you to hit mode right here. And then if you look here, we got radian or degree. Make sure degree is selected, okay? And to do that, you would arrow down twice into the right once. You'd hit enter on degree if it wasn't already like on there like it was with mine. And then to get out of this screen, you're going to hit second and then the mode button right above that. It's hard to see here, but it says quit. All right, so you hit second mode. Now you're back to this home screen. We're ready to calculate like a boss. All right, next up, sine of 20. So now I can just type, you see the sine, cosine, and tangent, right? Not sin, cosine. Sine, cosine, tangent. If I hit sine, I can just type in 20. I'm gonna close my parentheses because you know I'm a wonderful math student. Hit enter, and as I said, that is just a terrible, terrible decimal, right? But it's a number no less, okay? So if I have a number equals x divided by a number, how do I solve for x? Well, algebraically, I would multiply by 16 on both sides, and now I'd have 16 times the sine of 20, 16 times some number equals x. So let's go back to our calculator and type that in. You can either hit multiply by 16 right now, since I already typed in the sine of 20, hit enter, that would be my side length, or if you want to, you could type it all in at once, 16 times exactly how it looks, sine of 20, Boom, close my parentheses, hit enter. See, same thing, 5.47. So to solve this problem here, x is equal to 5.47. If I were to do two decimal places, I cannot get an exact value like we did with um, special right triangles. So a decimal approximation is all we've got. And if you'd like to be real bougie math, you can make those squiggly equals. Be like, hey man, I approximated. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right, one more situation with solving for sides. So here, once again, um, I've got my angle, which is 50 degrees. Um, next to that would be my adjacent, and here is my hypotenuse. So now, with adjacent hypotenuse, which trig function am I using? Ka, the middle. Cosine is the trig function. Ka is not the trig function. Cosine is my trig function. That's the part of the acronym, Ka. All right, so I'd have cosine of my angle, which is 50 degrees, equals my adjacent, which is eight, over my hypotenuse, which is x. Now this is a slightly more challenging situation algebraically speaking. My x is in the denominator. How am I gonna get that out? Well, if I'm dividing by x, I'm gonna multiply by x on both sides to get it out of it. That cancels it, and I'm left with x times the cosine of 50 degrees equals eight. Now, as we know, typing in the sine of 20 for the last problem, or in this case, cosine of 50, that's just gonna give me a decimal answer, right? So if I have x times some number, no matter what that number is, as long as it's not zero. I can divide by that number on both sides. And I'll do that over here as well. Now in my calculator, I can get x equals eight divided by, and I'm gonna put slashy fractions because this is how it's gonna look in my calculator if I can write a nice, oh, oh, that's beautiful. Cosine of 50 degrees. So that's what I'll type in my calculator. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now I've got eight divided by cosine of 50. If I hit enter, Boom, 12.4457, so 12.45. What do you think about that answer, Jenny? What do you think? Yeah, you're into that? Jenny is loving some right triangle trick. She's in fact dreaming about it right now. Okay, so 12.45 would be my answer here for X. And I got bougie with it, right? I made the squiggly equals. I just approximated, bro. I just rounded. That's not exact. I typed it in my calculator, and it gave me an approximate answer, right? Pretty darn close one, though. Pretty darn close. All right, there we go. Solving for sides. Two different algebraic scenarios. 
I hope you guys loved it as much as I did. America Freedom Rock and Roll Costco. Riverdog Jenny on the gram. See you guys later.